The iPhone 6 has yet to be released, but that is not stopping fully functioning clones from hitting the market, so let's check it out. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD. Hope you guys are doing well. I am back with a very interesting unboxing to say the least. As many of you guys are aware, we're still about a month, maybe two away from the release of Apple's upcoming iPhone 6, but right here in front of me, I have a fully functional iPhone 6 clone that even says iPhone 6 right smack on the box. Just gotta give it a little shake and bake because this box is fighting me on getting it open, but I really found this interesting because if anybody has seen my good buddy Michael's The Detroit Borgs unboxing, his actually came in an iPhone 5 box, so I was pretty surprised when I saw iPhone 6 stamped on the side. So taking a look at the back, you can see it's very consistent in terms of what we've seen so far compared against the dummy mockups that leaked earlier this year. The big difference here being obviously it turns on and it functions. So because of those similarities and a few production parts that have leaked recently, I think it's fairly safe to say that this is essentially what the iPhone 6 will look like, give or take. I also just received a handful of iPhone 6 cases from Spigen, which may or may not add credibility to the whole leak and mock-up design. But regardless, if you guys are interested in checking those out, let me know by hitting that like button. Now, spoiler alert, this may look like an iPhone 6, but as far as performance goes, it is not snappy at all. It's sadly actually a massively underpowered iOS skinned Android device, essentially. If you compare it to the iPhone 5S, for example, you can see in terms of performance on Geekbench, it gets absolutely destroyed. But what's interesting though, if you look at the specs on paper, they're actually pretty close. They're both dual core, they're clocked around one gigahertz, but I think this is a testament to not only Apple's performance hardware wise, but software as well. So continuing on with the unboxing because there actually was content and accessories which I found amusing. The first thing up is a quick start guide which says hello right smack there on the front just like Apple products. But if you dig a little bit deeper and look inside, the most hilarious thing that stood out to me is those are iOS 6 screenshots. So yeah. Next up, and I'm willing to bet these aren't authentic, probably less ear pods and more white color stereo bass headphone mic volume control remote earphone ear pods headset for iPhone. But nevertheless, at least alongside your iPhone 6 clone, you get iPhone 6 EarPod clones. Following that, we have the USB wall charger hanging out there wrapped up all nicely and such. This really isn't anything too spectacular, but at the very least, you can charge your iPhone 6 clone. Next up after that is the USB wall chargers PIC, the faux lightning cable. And alongside that is the SIM ejection tool. Now, obviously, I'm not going to bank on the lightning cable being authentic either, but at the very least, it was still pretty cool that they included the entire package like you would get with an iPhone. So now that we've blasted through the unboxing portion, we can dive in and dig a little bit deeper into the clone. I think obviously the biggest noticeable difference aside from the screen size increase is the complete aesthetic change from the iPhone 5S. No longer on the back side will we see those glass portions on the top and the bottom like the iPhone 5S. That will be replaced by what I would assume to be aluminum by the final production model. That is kind of sectioned off by the dual line design on the top and the bottom where presumably the antennas would go. But I think that kind of makes the iPhone 6 design look eerily similar to the HTC One M8. And if you agree or disagree, let me know with a comment down below. One thing I do want to point out that I do not like, and it's been consistent across the dummy mockups, is the fact that the camera on the back side of the iPhone 6 clone pops up. So to me, that would make it very vulnerable to scratches, something similar to the iPod Touch. I know it's probably going to be sapphire coated, but at the very least, why would you want to increase chances of damaging one of the most important pieces on your phone? You can also see different aside from the iPhone 5S, the Apple logo on the iPhone 6 clone is actually indented and recessed in there, much like we saw on the iPad mini with Retina display and iPad Air. Now, another big difference between these two is the actual power and sleep wake button. On the iPhone 5S, it's located on the top right hand side, whereas the iPhone 6 clone that is located on the actual right side above the SIM card tray. Now, because the iPhone 6 will presumably feature a larger 4.7 inch display, I think the power button move makes sense on a device like this. The volume rockers also look like they're getting some sort of makeover on the iPhone 5S. We have those classic circle Apple volume rockers up and down, but on the iPhone 6 clone, those look very similar to what we see on the iPod Touch again. Now, as far as whether I like them, dislike them, I'm kind of neutral, but I definitely say the increased size makes them a little bit easier to hit. 
So like I said previously, this is a fully functional device, but one big difference between this and the real upcoming iPhone 6 is there is no fingerprint touch ID reader on this clone. So that of course on this device means you are limited to swiping to unlock your phone. Now when I said this thing was not a performer, I meant it. It is extremely, almost laughable laggy, and I almost wanna go out kind of your average consumer style and go kind of bring this to people out in public and kind of get their feelings on how it performs, maybe even see if they notice the apparent lag compared to a current iPhone or even Android device. And if that's something you wanna see, definitely let me know. So like I also previously talked about, this essentially is an iOS skinned Android device and bits of pieces of Android creep out here and there. For example, if you hold down the home button, normally where you would get Siri on an iPhone, on this you get Google Now, which to me is a kind of an upgrade and I would prefer if I could do that on an actual iPhone. One thing I did notice, and again, if you did watch Detroit Borg's video, it is extremely hard to access the control center on this iPhone 6 clone. Sometimes it almost feels impossible, but I actually got it down almost to a science where if you hold your thumb right there between the bezel and the screen, and then you slide up, you can kind of feel it vibrate, and then you can nail it every single time. Now, I know I'm gonna get tons of questions of where can I buy this, and I wanna tell you with a giant warning sign, do not buy this for anything more than purely entertainment. This particular one you can pick up on Chinese websites from anywhere from 160 to 200 bucks. I know as of August 1st, Goofone will be releasing their clone version of the iPhone 6. But honestly, as you can see from performance, you're not getting anything that you would really want on an iPhone. And at this price, for a little bit more, you can get a Nexus 5 or if you can find it, you can get something like the OnePlus One, which is gonna absolutely destroy this in performance and overall just usability. I did get a chance to do a little bit of gaming on this iPhone 6 clone, and it wasn't as bad or as terrible as I would have imagined, but the actual touch screen wasn't really responsive and it kind of hindered the gameplay and overall enjoyment at times. Regardless, it did give me insights and a better look of what the 4.7 inch iPhone 6 will look like. I do really enjoy watching movies and media on a screen size like this. Honestly, my ideal screen size is anywhere between 4.7 and 5.1 inches. So as far as that goes, that is making me look forward to the actual iPhone 6. Now, in case anyone's curious, that right there is the Shield, and I've always been wanting to watch the series. I've heard great things, big fan of Kurt Sutter. Hadn't really made the plunge to buy any DVD sets or buy it online, but I actually recently started catching up and I'm able to watch the entire series with Hulu Plus. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Hulu, but Hulu Plus is like jumping from that super small four inch iPhone 5S display to the upcoming 4.7 inch iPhone 6 display. Also, if you guys weren't aware, in addition to watching shows at your pace, they actually just inked a deal to stream the entire library of South Park, including new episodes. Obviously it works on your computer, but it also works on your Xbox, your smart TV, your Apple TV, your Roku, and obviously an iPhone 6 clone. Now this is only $7.99 a month, but for TLD fans, you guys can actually get an extended 14 day free trial by heading over to huluplus.com slash TLD. By using that link, it helps the channel out. You guys get an awesome deal and everybody wins. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to hit that like button. It is much appreciated. And of course, in return, you get a virtual high five at your face. After seeing this, are you excited or not excited for the upcoming iPhone 6? Let me know with a comment down below. If you guys have any questions, of course, drop me a line. I do try to reply to as many YouTube comments as possible, but it does get a little bit messy. So the absolute best way to get in contact with me is on Twitter at TLD today, which is linked below, along with all the gear that I use to make these videos. Aside from that, again, this is Jonathan, and I will see you guys later.